aviation is indispensable. Many rely on it to travel, socialize, and explore new parts of the world. Goods and freight rely on it to be transported quickly. With so much riding on its wings, it's invincible. And so, in a hundred years from now, aviation will be an ancient relic. Every once in a while, a revolutionary product comes along that changes everything. Sometimes in the world, something comes along and changes everything. A spark, the wildest of dreams, could well change travel as we know it. This was how aviation was born over 100 years ago, with the first powered flight. But something changed. Here's the first aircraft ever to take to the skies. Here's another one 25 years on, another 25 years on. Seeing the change, from a typical kite to a McDonnell Douglas DC-3 with its wider fuselage and new generation turboprop propulsion. Another 25 years and we got another big leap through with the jet engine. But 25 years since that, and 25 years since that. Yep, not much has changed. While the jet engines have been fine-tuned over time and new aerodynamics developed, the general propulsion and configuration hasn't seen the rapid rate of advancement it's seen in the past. And it's this lack of new ideas, complacency, fear of investment, that could well be aviation's downturn. The year is 2030. Following a huge shock brought about by the coronavirus pandemic about a decade ago, airlines and aircraft manufacturers are more focused than ever on breaking even, survival, but in turn fear to make large risky investments. Aviation is a mature mode of transport, being around for many decades. But since then, new transportation solutions could become reality, two of which could have the capability of superseding aviation and transforming how we get from one place to another. Firstly, for short domestic routes, Hyperloops could pose a threat. Hyperloop is a vacuum sealed tube. Hyperloop capsules could travel at average speeds of 600 miles per hour. Trains could also be magnetically levitated, such as the maglev trains. Hyperloop is actually more similar to flights than one might think, just on the ground with no air instead of high up in the sky where the air is thin. Hyperloop capsules are driven by electricity and would be more environmentally friendly. Hyperloop capsules will not have to suffer delays due to bad weather and promises to give consumers a more comfortable and smoother ride. While tunnels could be expensive to build and maintain, long term, maintaining one tunnel and a fleet of electric trains could be cheaper than maintaining airport runways and a fleet of aircraft. Hyperloop capsules consist of fewer moving parts lowering maintenance costs. Passengers would be able to be transported exactly to their final destination and need not travel to airports. A hyperloop between San Francisco and Los Angeles could take only 35 minutes one way, compared to 1 hour and 25 minutes for a flight.
Given all these benefits, how are countries responding? India, a growing market with increased domestic travel, has invested over 10 billion in developing its Hyperloop system, and the United States is starting to invest in these as well. While investment levels have not reached aviation levels, this shows the confidence in Hyperloop as a revolutionary form of transport. Of course, the Hyperloop ain't perfect, the big one being the cost of construction, and of course the fact that building tunnels over sea wouldn't make sense. Hyperloop would only be used over land domestically or within landlocked countries. International travel would still be reserved for aviation, right? Well, think again. Welcome everyone on board Starship 359 from Singapore to San Francisco in record time. Starships land and take off vertically for Earth-to-Earth -Earth travel, meaning no large airports near land areas need to be built, simply a small ocean port for Starship to land about 10 kilometers out. And then of course there's the speed of it. With most long distance trips dealt within an hour, it does everything Concorde did and turns it up to 11, faster and maybe even cheaper. SpaceX has designed the Starship and Booster to be completely reusable, with quick turnaround times typical of a 737. The heat shield is designed to withstand multiple Earth re-entries and so are the Raptor engines. You might be wondering, how much would a trip cost? Well, according to SpaceX COO... Yeah, I think it'd be between economy and business. She also stated that Starships would begin ferrying passengers by 2030. Very ambitious. While fuel and maintenance costs would undoubtedly be higher than an A350, SpaceX plans to rapidly turn Starship around and carry out multiple missions to many destinations in the time an A350 takes to complete just one. Once in orbit, the ride is smooth, no turbulence, no weather. And one could argue the ascent and landing is a roller coaster gone rogue thrown in. Starship Earth to Earth concept though isn't perfect either. Firstly, given the seaport would be around 10 km out, a boat ride longer than the flight itself is needed. The fuel burn would be immense, with ticket prices at least at premium economy levels eventually. And then there are launch delays. SpaceX has a tendency of pushing back launches due to poor weather, not just for a few hours, but of days. To overcome these challenges, larger starships carrying more passengers must be built to lower the cost per passenger, while launch procedures and wind limits of Starship spacecraft must be increased to launch even in poor weather. <music> 
Starship, however, would cannibalize the need for supersonic commercial flights, given it's faster and simply better in what supersonic flights was all about, speed. These may seem like the wildest of ideas, but remember, over 90 years ago, the scene of large twins flying passengers freely all over the world would have been thought of as a bunch of malarkey. With huge investments being made and leaps in space and Hyperloop technology, these technologies would eventually mature and could one day be accepted by general consumers. SpaceX is pioneering a new commercial spaceflight industry, inviting other companies to compete and build their own passenger-certified spacecraft to carry people. Competition between spaceflight airlines and spacecraft companies would drive costs down. It would be a repeat of just how civilian aviation markets were born. Remember those early days DC-3s when flying was a luxury for the wealthy? With manufacturers competing with each other on who could build the better aircraft and the commercial airline industry growing, competition plus the deregulation of ticket prices brought flying to more people. Look at aviation today, the massive industry it's grown into. While Hyperloop and space flights may be niche initially, they would grow into new transportation industries and costs lowered over time. So perhaps one day in the ever exciting future, whenever we choose to travel across the planet, we can always choose a faster ride to take us wherever we want to go. Humanity will continue the dream.